No one has ever seen God at any time. Notice any time. But if you go to Genesis and read chapter 15 of Genesis, chapter 16 of Genesis, chapter 17 of Genesis, chapter 18 of Genesis, chapter 28 of Genesis, chapter 32 of Genesis. And if you read Exodus 24, 24, 9 to 18, specifically 9 to 11, and Isaiah 6, Amos chapter 9, verse 1, 1 Kings 22, 19 to 23, Daniel 7, 9 to 10, many people saw the God of Israel. In Numbers 12, verses 6 to 8, Jehovah speaking about Moses, he says, Moses sees the form, the similitude of Jehovah, and I speak to speak with him mouth to mouth. But wait, John 1 18 again. No one has ever seen God. That includes the time of the prophets of the Old Testament and the patriarchs. Contradiction? No, because now let's finish it. Monogenes, we us, the only begotten son, sorry for butchering the Greek, who's in the bosom of the father, who resides in the very heart of the father, he has explained him. John 1 18 is not saying you cannot see the Godhead. What it's saying is you cannot know God, perceive God, have a relationship with God, intimate commune with God, unless and until the Son comes and out of the favor of the Son makes God known to you, reveals God to you, and enables you to have a relationship with God, and even allows you to see God. So let me correct a misinterpretation of this passage. People think the Father can never be seen, only the Son can be seen. That's not what John is saying. And please don't repeat that nonsense. Many Trinitarians repeat it, even the comment section, even Matt Slick. It only takes one sharp anti-Trinitarian to destroy that argument. Daniel 7, 9 to 10, and 13 to 14. Daniel 7, verses 9 to 10, 13 14, it says, Daniel saw God the Father appearing as the Ancient of Days with, with a head of white woolen hair, white robe on a throne, and saw Jesus, Son of Man, coming to him. So if he saw Jesus as the Son of Man, that means the Ancient of Days is not Jesus, but God the Father, whom he saw visibly. That's also confirmed in Revelation 4 and 5. John, in the Spirit, by the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord, was transported to heaven, and he saw visibly God the Father in visible shape, in visible form, on a throne with a scroll in his right hand, and then he saw Jesus appearing as a young male lamb with the throat slit, seven horns, seven eyes, taking the scroll out of the hand, the right hand of God the Father. So to say that this means God the Father cannot be seen, you are butchering scripture and you're creating contradictions. What John is saying is, it's because of Jesus that you are allowed to see the Father and the Spirit. It's because of Jesus that you can know the Father and the Spirit intimately. It's Jesus who has to make the Father known to you and allow you to see the Father as well as receive the Spirit and know the Spirit and walk with the Spirit and even see the Spirit. So don't ever say this means that God the Father is not be seen because let me tell you the problem with that. Because the question will be, why can't God the Father be seen? Now, Trinitarians end up shaming and dishonoring the Lord unintentionally when they say this. God the Father is too holy to be seen, so Jesus is the one seen. You understand you just blaspheme Jesus, not intentionally, and once you're aware of it, you need to repent of it? What do you mean the Father is too holy to be seen? So he's saying Jesus is not as holy, he's less holy than the Father, so you can see him? See, that's blasphemy, isn't it? Or you end up blaspheming the Father, because if the Father can't be seen, but the Son can be seen, then if it's not because the Father is too holy, because then that you mean Jesus is less holy, then that means Jesus is more merciful and compassionate. Jesus is so merciful and compassionate, he'll allow you to be he will allow you to see him, but you can't see the Father. Why? Why we why can't we see the Father? Are you saying he's not as compassionate and loving as the Son to allow himself to be seen in a form? See, either way, you end up robbing one person of the Godhead of his glory. Now, let me explain what it means to see the Father and see the Spirit. John 4, 24, God by nature, God is spirit, John 4, 24. Now, what does that mean? In the context, Jesus means God is not a spatial being. Angels are spirits, but they're spatial beings, meaning they are spirit creatures that have a spiritual shape, a spiritual form, but they have abilities to do things that we can't do, 
and travel places at much faster velocity. So Gabriel can be here, and in a second, he can be in California. But that also is true of human beings. For example, if you read Acts 8.39, it says the Holy Spirit took Philip and in a nanosecond transported him out of sight so that the unit couldn't see him anymore. So the Holy Spirit can even take physical bodies and take you from one place to the next in a speed of light. Spirit creatures are spirits, Hebrews 1.7, but they're not spirits like God is spirit. Spirit creatures, because they're part of creation, and this dimension called heaven is part of creation, it's still a dimension of space, place, and time, but it's made of a different substance from the earth. The substance of heaven is similar enough to the substance of the earth so that the angels can enter this domain and do human functions like appear in a body and eat food, and we can enter that domain. Okay, but it's all part of creation. It's all part of space and time, but it's not made of the same stuff, substance, just like in space. Space is still part of creation, but the elements of space, similar to what's on Earth, but the Earth also has elements that's different from what we find in space. And the most obvious is when you go to space, you're weightless. When you go to space, there's no oxygen. You see the point? All right. So God is spirit in a unique sense. He is spaceless. He is placeless. He's immaterial. He has no shape of any kind, no form of any kind. Why? Because logically, if he created all space, all place, all time, all matter, that means he exists. When there was no space, no place, no matter, no time. That means he can't have a shape by nature. Because if he has a shape, that shape requires space, place, and time. So God, who by nature is invisible, immaterial, spaceless, being the creator of all shape, space, and place, can then assume any shape, any form, at any given moment, and he can actually assume multiple shapes at the same time and manifest those shapes all over creation. Why do you think in Revelation you'll have the seven spirits which is a reference to the Holy Spirit and his perfection, appearing in one scene as seven eyes on the face of Jesus, Revelation 5, 6, but in Revelation 4, 5, appearing as seven lampstands. And why do you think that Jesus can appear in Revelation 1, 12 to 18 as a son of man who looks like the ancient of days, whose feet are burnished bronze, whose face shines like the sun, fire surrounding him and a sword coming out of his mouth, but then elsewhere appear like a son of man with a golden crown on his head, seated on a cloud as his throne. Because there, it's Jesus manifesting different shapes, different forms, different appearances by virtue of his divine nature that is spaceless. But as a man with a physical body, that physical body he possesses forever, it's united to him forever, and that physical body appears the same. It's incorruptible. It's unchangeable. So what does John 1.18 mean then? Let's repeat it because this proves Isaiah saw Jesus. John said Isaiah saw the glory of Jesus before he became man. When he saw Jehovah in a visible form, in a visible shape, with a visible robe on a visible throne, that was Jesus appearing to him. But it wasn't Jesus alone. It was Jesus appearing as Jehovah on behalf of the Godhead and speaking on behalf of the God Godhead. So when he saw Jehovah, he was seeing the Godhead. So what does John 1.18 mean? And I'll give you proof on this. No one has seen God any time. The only begotten Son who's in the bosom of the Father, in the heart of the Father, he has revealed him. What John is saying here is, not that you can't see the Father or the Spirit, not that you can't perceive who the Father is or what the Spirit's like. You can if the Son reveals that to you. So he's saying, it's the Son who allows you to see the Godhead, himself, the Father, and the Spirit. Why do you think John the Baptist saw the Holy Spirit descend in visible shape, in bodily shape like a dove. Why? Because Jesus was there. Because Jesus allowed him to see the Spirit. Because of Jesus, John was allowed to hear from God the Father audibly and see the Holy Spirit visibly. Why do you think in Matthew 17, 5, Peter, James, and John saw the cloud visibly come down upon them and they heard the voice of the Father audibly say to them, with Moses and Elijah present, and Jesus transfigured, this is my son whom I love, listen to him, because of Jesus.